Welcome back to 3D Dialogue. Little Mosque on the Prairie is a Canadian sitcom on CBC television that focuses on a satirical look at a Muslim community living in Mercy, Saskatchewan. The creator of the show is here to tell us about the series and the impact it has made. Joining me is Zarka Nawaz, creator of Little Mosque on the Prairie. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Now, we should probably start by me admitting that I'm a huge fan of the show, and I've watched Great. every episode, and I love it. And I know I personally would like to hear a little more about how it got on the TV. I mean, where did you get the idea? And I'm assuming it is relatively difficult to get a, a show on Canadian television. They tell me, yeah, they tell me it is. <laughs> so tell us about the process. I mean, how, how, how did it work? Well, I was making um, short films for you know for years mm -hmm. and so I loved making comedic short films and I was doing that for a while and then I made a documentary called me in the mosque mm -hmm. not that every project I do has the word mosque in it but the last two did and I, I went across the country and I was exploring the relationship between the Imam and his congregation the relationship mm -hmm. between the congregation and the non-muslim community and I was thinking to myself you know most of the time our Imams are imported you know from Muslim countries I thought it would be really interesting um, to have a mosque which had a Canadian-born imam who could relate sort of to the young people, to the women, and how would that change the dynamic of the community mm -hmm. and how it would relate to the non-Muslim community. So I came up with this idea that a young Canadian lawyer, um, Amar Rashid, decides to give up his law career, um, move to the prairies and take up um, the imamship, if you can call it, of a mosque, mm -hmm. and how that would um, work its way out between the relationship between the different people in the mosque. Mm -hmm. Now, before we continue further, let's actually look at the clip you have, just in case there is anyone who's watching who has yet to be pleasured by watching the show. Let's sure. give them a little taste. And now, here with everything you've always wanted to know about Christianity, but we're afraid you'd be converted, <laughs> welcome Sister Sarah. Where to begin? Um, okay, well, uh, Christianity started a long, long time ago. 2,007 years ago. Oh, good for you, Fatima. How did you know that? I have a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tough crowd. Oh, yes, sir, yeah, do you have a question? Yes, my seat smells. Is that why they call it a pew? <laughs> <laughs> you better behave or you'll get the strap. Promises? Do something exciting. What? Oh, I know, I know, communion. <clears throat> Sister Sarah, why don't you tell us all about communion? Well, communion is, um, is where the minister blesses the, the wafers and the uh, grape juice to represent the body and blood of Christ. Why? So, so we can eat them. I would not engage in cannibalism. <laughs> What I find really so riveting about the show, you talked about how you sort of change a little by having a Toronto lawyer who mm -hmm. decides he wants to be an imam. The other thing I find interesting is I think a lot of non-Muslims really don't realize the rural or the small town Muslim communities that do exist in Canada compared to the urban communities. Tell me more about why you chose Mercy, Saskatchewan as a place to set the show. Well, actually, it's not even in set in Saskatchewan. It's just set somewhere in the prairies. Mm -hmm. um, because I grew up in Toronto, and I got married. My husband is from Saskatchewan. He was there since um, he was two years old. Mm -hmm. And so when, we, when, I, you know, when I married him, we moved to Saskatchewan, and I've spent the last 10 years of my life there. You know, we've had four kids, and they're being raised as these little prairie children mm -hmm. and so it was this big cultural adjustment from going from the big city to the small city and mm -hmm. then from a place where there's lots of mosques to a place where there's only one mosque and so I kind of was I am um, that fish out of water so I wanted to explore that dynamic I had no idea that people in the rest of the country had this attitude about people in Toronto I was like completely clueless because <laughs> yeah. right? in a way a Toronto people from Toronto are like Americans you don't know about the rest of the world people in Toronto don't know about the rest of the country mm -hmm. and so you come and you realize there's this um, resentment and you don't understand why and so I thought I wanted to you know experiment with that and that notion of this imam who comes and thinks he knows it all, he's going to tell these people what to do and, and straighten them all out. And, and, you know, in fact, he's the one who learns the lessons. Well, and another thing I find so riveting about the show is all the cast of characters. I mean, it's everyone, I think, is such a compelling personality, yet there really isn't a homogeneity. It's not that, you know, a Muslim is one type of person. But in fact, you really play off different tensions within this Muslim community. Could you maybe elaborate on, I guess, 
not so much the tensions, but the characters that really round out, in this case, the cast. Well, I mean, you know, at Muslims, we're not, we're not a monolith. We're just like mm -hmm. any other group of people. We have our extremists, we have our liberals, we have our secularists, we have our rebels, our teenage rebels, we have our Muslim feminists. So I wanted to show a Muslim community that had a full range of ideologies, mm -hmm. you know, because we only ever see that, you know, the one crazy Muslim screaming and shooting his gun in the air on the news every night. And so there's a skewed perspective of what the Muslim community is, mm -hmm. whereas in fact, you know, we are the entire range of people, and I wanted to do a show which explored, you know, the faith and its attitudes towards comedy and the faith in from the entire spectrum. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we do have to take a commercial break, but let's come back and continue this conversation. Sure. I'm speaking with Zarka Nawaz, producer and creator of The Little Mosque on the Prairie. We'll be back with more right after the break. You're watching 3D Dialogue. Islam. Nice, don't Beautiful. you think? Beautiful. That's why I'm here. I don't want people leaving the open house thinking Islam treats women as second-class citizens. I agree completely. And I'd love your input. I think you have a unique take on this. Unique? Really? Sure. I think people would find it surprising that there's such a thing as a Muslim feminist. They'd never believe it. It's like finding a friendly Torontonian. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. They see the headscarf, they think oppression. They can't get their head around it. <laughs> you really do need help with this, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for helping advertise the open house. It's the least I can do for a paying customer. Oh, right. Uh, I'll have a plate of fries. Say, so you must have tons of information on the influence of Islam in Africa. Yes from an African perspective. You usually only hear the missionary position. <laughs> what? Forget it. Man. Welcome back to 3D Dialogue. That was a clip of Little Mosque on the Prairie. And I'm in studio today with Zarka Nawaz, producer and creator of the Little Mosque on the Prairie. Now, what struck me as really fascinating about the show is the way it sort of normalizes the Canadian Muslim, that in fact they're a Canadian, and whether or not they practice a particular faith is almost secondary to that fact. Was that a conscious decision that you had in terms of starting up the show and producing the show? Well, what I wanted was just to show Muslims as they are in real life as normal people who are fathers and mothers and kids and you know the relationship husbands wives people who raise their kids and play, pay their bills and just have the, have an ordinary life which all of us do mm -hmm. and yet you know there's a skewed perspective because you see sort of that violent oppressive muslim when you only ever see that muslim on television it changes your viewpoint on this like you know one one point three billion or how many ever there are right now muslims in the world and so this show is just, you know, showing a normal community going about their day-to-day -day activities as Muslims do in this country mm -hmm. and all over the world. Well, and, and again, you've really made a conscious effort, especially within a small community, to show incredible diversity. I mean, in that clip we saw, you know, a Muslim feminist. And then you have the character Fatima, you know, who sort of represents an African sort of centric Islam. Mm -hmm. And Babar as another sort of, you know, different. And then even a convert to exactly. Muslim. I mean, how... I guess how difficult is it to illustrate such diversity within the context of a sitcom, which obviously has perhaps limited context? Well, you know, when I sat down and I started creating the characters, I have to say they came to me very quickly mm -hmm. because these were the people I'm surrounded with. My, my sister-in-law, I have two sister-in-laws who are converts to Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, our community is made up of Muslims from all over the world, from Africa, from South Asia, from... Um, the Middle East, so I mean, Muslims come from all over the world, mm -hmm. and so I'm surrounded by you know this diverse now, di di diversity and regionality. So it wasn't difficult at all. And then you know from, from ideology, of course, we've got the really conservative, orthodox Muslims and the liberal, secular Muslims, and you know the Muslims in the middle and the moderates and and all the people in between. So I just you know took the whole range and said, let's pick one archetype for each group mm -hmm. and make a character for each one of those groups. And then the whole thing came together. Well, and it seems like quite a subtle yet powerful way to demonstrate this heterogeneity of communities, that it's, you know, Muslims are not all the same, but have the same diversity of really any other faith. Let's take a moment to look at our last clip sure. that we have from the show. 
here's one I get at the clinic. Why do you Muslims pray all the time, hmm? Okay, let me get this one. You see, my pasty white friend, it is like this. In prayer, every muscle and bone in the body joins the mind and the soul in the glory and worship of Allah. No, that'll sound too weird for our Christian visitors. Weird? They drink Jesus' blood. Barber, please don't talk about things you don't understand. Then he'd never say anything. Amma, you can help us. We're rehearsing our speeches for the open house. Speeches? You don't need to make speeches. It's the Imam's job to explain things. So you're saying we don't need to worry our pretty little heads about this? Well, Babur's head isn't all that pretty, but yes. But what do you know about being a Muslim woman? Or a black Muslim woman? Or a Muslim man? He doesn't even have a beard. If I don't get to talk, I'm out. I knew this was a bad idea. I'm with Babar. We're, what's the word? Boycotting. I was going to say pissed off, but yes, we're boycotting. Well, I guess it's just uh, you and me. Well, you've got that half right. I love the way that comedy is used in this show. Really, not just to poke fun at the way we think of Muslims, but also poke fun at the way we think of Christians and even Canadians in general. Absolutely. And that sort of tongue-in-cheek, I think, makes it lighter, makes it easier for people to talk about what are otherwise sensitive issues. What kind of response have you got in terms of this show being out there now that the first season's oh, done? It's just incredible. Like I, you know, I knew we were going to get attention, but like we got attention from all over the world, like it mm -hmm. went global. I mean, the entire world was watching this show and wanted to know uh, how it was going to turn out and what people's reactions were going to be. And I remember talking to a journalist in Europe and I said, why, why do you care so much? And he's like, you don't understand, this is the first time we have ever seen a positive image of Muslims. We mm -hmm. never see this. And on top of that, you've made it a comedy. And on top of that, you put it in the mosque and you've made it about faith. And it's this combination that we didn't think anyone could do and get away with and do successfully. And yet in Canada, uh, you know, we've become like this poster child for everything that's right about our country, about multiculturalism, about assimilating different groups of people, and, and what's successful about our nation. So it's, it's this wonderful thing that's happened. Did you realize that you were going to be such a groundbreaker in terms no, of this I, light type of original I thought it was a really great show, and a really funny show, and a well-acted, well-written show, and we have a great team of writers and great actors, and I mean, we all knew that, but mm -hmm. the fact that it just ignited this worldwide global phenomenon was something that did catch us all off guard. So now that I have you on camera, I have to ask what are the plans for the next seasons I mean is there any plot twists that you can give us sneak peeks at or new characters perhaps well the, the CBC has ordered 20 more and they're even better and funnier um, than the first season. It's going to be a great season. We're very excited. Mm -hmm. um, everyone always wants to know about Amar and Ryan. Are <laughs> yes. they going to get together? And I'm like, well, you're going to have to watch and see. <laughs> there will be some interesting, you know, progression with that story. But you're going to have to tune in in October when they'll be airing. So, mm -hmm. but you won't be disappointed. It's going to be a great season. And finally, we only have about uh, 20 seconds left. But I'm curious if. You yourself, do you still identify with the show? Is it still the small town that you moved to in Saskatchewan, or has it taken on a whole life of its own? Well, I mean, every show, once, once it, it's amazing. Once it get, gets created, every, each, the actors, the, the, um, the writers, everyone working together, it's almost like magic. You mm -hmm. create this thing, and it becomes its own entity, and it mm -hmm. becomes its own thing. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but thank you very much for coming in. I do no love problem. the show, and thank I look forward to the second season. All right, thanks for having me. That was Zarka Nawaz, producer and creator of The Little Mosque on the Prairie. Coming up next, we'll have a discussion with veteran foreign correspondent on the topic of politics and faith. Right after the break, you're watching 3D Dialogue.